Well, good morning, St. James and St. Mark's. I'm here today as uh, in conversation with Sherry from Hospice Care, and she's going to share some more information about the hospice, and I have some questions to ask her. And this is our message for today. Given the time that we're in with COVID so prevalent, uh, as our own parents and grandparents grow older, that question comes to mind. How can we continue to support our loved ones with care? How does that work? Sherry's going to share a little bit with us about hospice care. I'm going to let her introduce herself now. Hi, everybody. I am Sherry Tumashahansky. I am with St. Croix Hospice. We have branches in Sheboygan, Fond du Lac, and Brookfield to service pretty much Wisconsin. I thank you, and it is a blessing to be here. Thank you, Patrick to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is hospice. So I think of hospice as the gift, hospice as the help that everybody really needs. We have to get over that dreaded H word. Everybody hears the word hospice and thinks the worst. That is one of the reasons why I love to be here today, Patrick, is to really go over the myths, which there are so many myths with the H word. Yes. yes. Thank you. Well, the first myth that I have for you is hospice is only available for patients within days or weeks to live. And that is absolutely by far the biggest myth out there. Um, hospice myths and misconceptions keep family members, keep patients from receiving full support of hospice care. Entering hospice early has many benefits, such as symptom management, pain relief, medical, stabil medical stability, easy for me to say, and comprehensive support to family members and the patient. So, no. Hospice care is the beginning of a new journey. It is for anyone who has um, diagnoses, and the list is very long, um, of dementia, of cardiac issues, COPD, pulmonary, um, kidney failure, frequent hospitalization. So textbook definition of who is eligible for hospice would be if that diagnosis proceeds on the path that it is scripted in black and white, if everything goes the way that um, papers say it should, the person would have six months or less to live. Once again, we live in our spiritual world of nobody really knows when that journey is going to end. We don't know. Right. It, it is a different definition for everybody. So it can be, best case scenario, a revolving door to teach patients and families how to symptom manage. Thank you. Is it true that hospice care is expensive? Absolutely not. Hospice care is, once again, hospice is the gift. Hospice is a benefit that everybody pays into under Medicare. Once hospice admission happens, hospice benefits are taken from Medicare. Medicare flips to hospice. Then with the hospice benefits, um, you are getting so many things. You are getting the care. You are getting the five, seven, ten person team coming in for symptom management, for medical stabilization, for um, symptom management, and to have that psychosocial support for that patient. 
patient and family members. In addition to getting <clears throat> the medical help, to getting the medical um, oversight by an RN, you are also getting the medications. So the diagnosis that qualifies the person for hospice would be the main diagnosis. So let's, out of the blue, let's just take COPD. So um, the person is admitted under hospice because of COPD and symptoms are getting worse. Um, the person is not wanting to go to the hospital with the flare-ups because there's you know, not much they can do. Right. Hospice can do that symptom management. The person may want to take a second look at being at a hospital right now because of the situation that we are in. So there's many different um, scenarios that play into the decision. So um, the medications would be covered due to the diagnosis. Um, the medical equipment, um, in the field we call it DME, durable medical equipment. So it would be hospital bed, it would be a walker, it would be a wheelchair, a bedside table, so incontinence products, anything that is needed in your home to help support and manage the diagnosis is all brought to you by hospice. And the cost of that is nothing because it is the benefit that is converted from the Medicare benefit. Thank you. You bet. Um, so uh, going back in, in part to your first response to the myth, hospice is only available, available for patients with days or weeks to live. Uh, is it also a myth that hospice is only for cancer patients? There are so many diagnoses out there, and we touched on that. It is, you know, we are looking at the medical worst case scenario. So should the COPD continue on its journey, the way scientists, the way black and white papers say it should, which means the end result would be six. Right. Really right. the case, you know, it is hard to put that end on a diagnosis because with hospice, you are getting the support, the management, learning to manage your symptoms without having to go to the hospital every week, every two weeks. The guidance of an RN calling the RN so there is a crisis situation. Oh, very good point. There is a crisis situation, and I don't know how to deal with it. Um, my family doesn't know how to deal with it. You call hospice 24-7. There is somebody on call waiting to help you. So, so really, it is that support with any diagnosis. Once again, it could be dementia, it could be Alzheimer's, the memory issues, um, the cardiac, the COPD, pulmonary, kidney, um, frequent hospitalizations. Um, so there are so many situations that could bring you to a hospice consultation. And then you really get the answers to say yes. Th this would be applicable. Thank you. Very good. How about this one? Uh, hospice means only physical care. And that is in the big M category, so that is a myth. With hospice, and I've touched on this briefly, with hospice, you get your team the team that is dedicated for you and your family. The team would be physician, which could be your own physician. We'll tap into that one a little bit later. So the physician, the registered nurse, the CNA, the social worker, music therapist, massage therapist, pet therapist, dietitian, the therapies, which would be the physical therapy, the occupational therapy, the speech therapy, speech not only for speaking, but speech for 
swallow, swallowing issues. Sure. So there is each one of those really diced into different categories. Then you have the chaplain, and then there are also volunteers. The caveat on the volunteers right now is with the COVID situation that we are into. Really, we look for maximizing the people that you need, but not bringing too many people into your situation. Sure. Which brings a good point. We all have to figure out answers to the pandemic that we're living in. Um, the hospice company that I work for, we were an industry leader. Back in September, we were all mandated once a week that we get COVID testing. And that has gone on. So with the assurance of somebody choosing hospice, they know we have our um, results that we are negative. Right, right. So we have that done every week. Right. So we can be tested twice a week to make sure we're safe. To go in. To go in. We're treating you. We're keeping you safe. We're keeping us safe. We're keeping your family safe. And we're keeping our family safe. Very good. Thank you. Is it true that hospice means giving up? Oh, that's my biggest one. I kind of have to bite my tongue when I hear that one. Absolutely not. Um, once again, it is hospice is hope. Hospice is the gift of hope. Hospice is understanding that, yes, unfortunately, I have a diagnosis that, once again, the textbook, the scientist, the whomever, says that there is a six-month situation here. Hospice is understanding that, yeah, I have something serious going on with me. However, I want help. I want help to manage my symptoms. <clears throat> I want my own personal RN. I want my own personal um, CNA. I want my chaplain. I want a team of professionals who are educated. We also have all of our frontline team educated under the dementia training. So we have the tools that we can bring to each one of our families to maximize your situation. We all know that if we take our vitamins every day, we have a better chance of living longer because we're getting the right nutrients. With hospice, <clears throat> you bring in your team, your 10-person, your 7-person, your 5-person team, and that is extending your life expectancy because you're doing the right thing. So it's really focused on quality of life for the patient and the support for family. So thank you. That, that is one of you know, the top three right there. It is truly a myth. I like uh, the analogy that I got from my head, not necessarily what you said, but the hospice team is our vitamins for life. Thank you. I just thought of that one. <laughs> that one just came to my head, and it's so true. I have to write that one down Great. because that is absolutely, it is giving us what we need. To extend. Yes, yes. Thank you. Is it true that you need to give up your primary doctor to begin hospice? Once again, falls in the middle category. Absolutely not. And with our physicians, we have a trust. It is normally somebody we've seen um, for. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and God bless, people can say 50 years. Right. So it is working with our physician. And that could be a couple physicians. That could be a cancer physician. That could be a primary physician. So you can bring you know, the physicians to the table that you're comfortable with. But also there is another caveat to that is <clears throat> times change. So the physician that I just recently
grew a trust pattern with, um, had her for quite some time. She is moving to Texas to be with her family. So now I have to go through that whole journey of trying to find somebody. Or it could be my physician that my mother has had for 40 years, retired. So she is now looking for a new physician too. So with that, we bring our hospice physicians. So we do have four hospice physicians that are under our team and we can have them oversight, supervise, and really scrutinize and look at the medical stuff. They are included, if it would be our physicians, the four that we work with, um, and what really is huge with this company is that we have Dr. Andrew Mayo. He is the chief medical officer for physicians. He is one of the males talking Mayo Clinic. So we are bringing the expertise, the knowledge, his passion, his dedication to the hospice industry. So once again, hospice is a choice. There are so many choices. You are deciding what you want, when you want, how you want it. Thank you. My last myth question, all of your medical decisions must be made before beginning hospice. Absolutely not. Our life changes constantly on a daily basis. Not only with a hospice diagnosis, but just you and I. So something that I thought was in stone yesterday. I changed my mind. Same thing with hospice. You don't have to have all of your ducks in a row. That's why we have the team, the 10 person, 7 person, 5 person team, to help you make those educated decisions. It sounds like there's a lot of fluidity uh, because indeed, and especially at that time of a person's life, things can be uh, constantly changing, uh, and, and subsequently your decisions change. But what I believe to be a constant is hospice care. So the the day to day, the medical, the the uh, prescription, the at home or in the hospice or assisted living can change, but the care is there, at, no that, matter no matter what. That is absolutely. The question that I have is, how do you start or begin the hospice process? Uh, does the family make the call? Does the patient make the call? Does the doctor make the call? The, the GP that you've had for 30 years? or How does that work? All of the above. Well, that's wonderful, Sherry. I, I want to thank you for your time and the sharing of this information with us. Uh, hospice care and the care that it provides physically, uh, medically, prescription-wise, psychologically, socially, uh, and spiritually with the, with the chaplain being available as well as ideally connection with that person's pastor. All of that is so important and important especially when the, the signs indicate that we are Ending or close to ending our time here, and uh, so I want to thank you, Sherry, for really breaking some of these myths, breaking them down, and letting us know that there is uh, the gift of hope through hospice for us. Thank you.